Hi everybody, thank you all so much for tuning in. Um, so today is all about um, the impact that COVID-19 has on our finances. And you know, every time I choose a topic to come online and talk to you guys um, about the impact of this pandemic, it really is a result of all of the different conversations that I have with people, um, whether it be over the phone, through uh, video calls, through messages, um, through comments that I see online. Um, and so I know that uh, how our finances have been impacted by this pandemic is huge and it's global. Um, and so I wanted to talk about that today. Um, but there's a few disclaimers before I talk about um, the impact of the finances. First is uh, this isn't a get rich quick system that I'm going to share with you. So if you're looking for something like that, sorry to disappoint you, but that's not what this is. Um, I'm not giving away any money today, so there's no prizes, there's no cash giveaway here today. Um, these are really just about my ideas and my tips based on my journey as an adult, everything that I've been through, things that I'm going through today um, during this time of um, quarantine, things that I've learned through different mentors that I've had the privilege of working with um, either directly or just you know people that I follow online books that I've read. Um, and I also want you guys to know that there are no guarantees. So whatever I share with you today doesn't mean that you're going to have the same successes that I have. Uh, you could even be more successful um, than me at the end of the day. It's all about the work that you put in. So whatever you work, you put into this are the results that you're going to get from this. It's like anything else that you do in life, right? Um, so, you know, first and foremost, for those of you that don't know who I am or what I'm about, um, I wear many different hats. I'm a mom, I'm a grandma, um, but I'm also a grief recovery specialist. That's really my purpose in life now is to really uh, give grief a voice. Uh, I'm also a self-love coach. A lot of that comes from my own personal journey of discovering who I, um, who I was after Frank died. Um, I became a solopreneur after being in corporate America for almost 25 years. Um, and a lot of the work that I do is around um, grief, again, coaching, HR consulting. Um, I'm, a, you know, I'm a speaker. I go out there and I speak about grief um, on many different platforms. Um, and most recently, I'm a network marketer. So those are the many different hats that I wear. Oh, of course, I'm a daughter and a sister and an auntie and a grandma and a Nina and all of those other things, right? So um, I always like to come first to you guys from an emotional perspective, right? Because that is my expertise. I am a grief expert and everything around grief is, grief is all about human emotions. So in this time of this pandemic, so many people are experiencing the loss of finances and um, and it can bring on a lot of different emotions right um, there could be fear there could be a lot of anger you know you're angry that you know you've lost your job or that your hours were reduced um, there could be a lot of sense of uh, loss of control right so there are these um, uh, ripple effect of grief you know there could be feelings of disappointment um, some people might even feel entitled, right? That you're entitled to certain things. Um, and all of these human emotions that you're feeling today because of the impact that um, COVID-19 has on your finances, like I've said with any other loss that I talk about, it's all normal and it's all natural, guys. So just own it, acknowledge it, and feel those emotions. The thing though about losing your finances um, is that there is another part to that, right? So after you go through all of those human emotions, you don't want to sit there. You don't want to stay stuck in it. Now that you've got this clarity, right? We say in the grief recovery method that when your heart is broken, your head doesn't work right. And so a lot of times um, when we're going through something like this, we have a, a very, um, a very clouded sense of clarity, if you will. We don't know which direction to go. We're depending on the government um, for these stimulus checks, or we're hoping that our jobs won't be affected, right? But you still have that anxiety, that, that anticipation that it probably will. If you haven't been affected yet, this pandemic is still going on. We don't know how long it's gonna go on. And so you could be affected in a week tomorrow in a month right it just it's just a matter of time um, before more and more businesses are affected the longer that we're stuck in this place of quarantine 
So after you're done with all of those human emotions, you're done feeling it, you're done acknowledging it, you're done allowing it to process through you. Now we need to put on our mindset, right? We need to shift to that space. Um, and so just, you know, to give you um, some background on where I've been with um, loss of finances, you know, the first one I think for me, um, or at least the anticipation that it could possibly happen was 9-11. You know, those of you guys that were around with 9-11, I was working for the airline at that time. And I remember walking into the office the exact same day that it happened. And the first thing my boss said was, don't worry, business as usual, nothing has changed for us. In three days, it shifted and it changed dramatically. The airline industry was losing millions of dollars by the day. And so, you know, it was very understandable um, and not surprising that we were now going to start laying off employees. And I'm sure that that is what is happening already today. Um, if it hasn't started already, it's going to. Um, and so I lost, um, you know, my ability to stay in the position that I was in. I thought I was going to lose my job, um, but I ended up going back to my old position. Um, but that was also at the expense of someone else. And so, you know, my, um, my ability to be able to go back into that old job meant someone else's loss. Um, you know, and it's a whole nother area of grief um, for me and for the people that were involved in that area. But just to kind of give you a background that I know um, or I can relate to what it feels like when you're in this crisis and you are affected by these things, right? Um, another uh, thing was when Frank died. When Frank died, I lost his, um, his income. And so that was almost half of what um, I was normally used to getting. Um, and there was a lot of fear around that. I didn't have any control over losing those finances and he didn't know if I was gonna be able to make it um, through life without it, right? I was so comfortable and it was familiar for me. Um, and speaking of comfortable and familiar, you know, I wanna bring you back again to the grief recovery um, method definition of grief, right? Grief is the conflicting feelings caused by the end of or change in a familiar pattern of behavior. The loss of finances changes the familiar pattern of behavior that you're used to. You know, how much money is coming into your family? Can you provide food on the table next week, right? Next month, are you gonna be able to pay for your mortgage? Are you gonna be able to pay for your loans if you've got any of those, your credit cards, your car, or is your car gonna get repossessed, right? There's all of these things that are happening with us because the familiar pattern of getting this income no longer exists for you. And that could bring on a lot of conflicting feelings. I talked about that a little bit earlier. Um, and so getting back into the mindset shift, how do we get to that place? So I wanna to talk to you about you know, some of the mentors, some of the people that I've been following over the course of this pandemic. Um, people like you know Grant Cardone, if you know who he is. Um, he's a multi-billionaire, uh, he's a big sales guy. Um, and I, you know, I had the privilege of, of going to one of Grant's 10X conferences uh, in 2019. Um, Holton Bugs, you know, he is, um, you know, one of the most successful network marketers out there. Uh, Johnny Wimbry, like I'm so inspired by his deep messages. I mean, this guy is a very inspirational speaker. Les Brown, right? He writes all of those amazing books and he's also a motivational speaker out there. And I'll talk a little bit about some of Les Brown's, um, you know, nuggets that I've learned from him through this pandemic. Um, Marie uh, Forleo, she's one of my new favorites. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about her and what she want, she's shared and how she's inspired my life through this pandemic. Jesse Itzler, if you've never heard of him, you've, you've got to follow him as well on Instagram. Um, Pete Vargas, uh, he was one of my coaches, one of my mentors. Um, he's the one who actually taught me a lot about being on stage and uh, how to be successful um, on stages and any kind of stage. Um, and then one of my all-time favorites, JJ Virgin. Um, she's just amazing, all about you know holistic approaches to health and mindfulness and things like that. So these are just some of the major people that I follow today that I've been following for some time now. Um, follow them on Instagram or Facebook. They're not paying me, by the way, to, <laughs> to put them out there. But I just wanted you guys to know that a lot of this stuff that I'm going to tell you isn't things that I came up with by myself. Um, these are things that I've learned over time um, and more specifically during this time of the pandemic.
Um, so some of the um, common messages that these uh, big mentors of mine, these successful people in the world, um, some of the, the common messages that they have inspired in me is um, now is the time to reset. Press that reset button wherever you're at in your life, right? You have an opportunity now to recreate something even bigger, something even more creative, something even more dynamic in your life. Now is the time. Um, there's always a silver lining to something, right? So it isn't all bad news. It isn't all about the darkness and the uncertainties that are happening in our life today. There's always a silver lining to all of it. Um, changing your mindset, right? We're talking about mindset shift. So changing your mindset and I'll give you some tips about how you could do that. Um, opportunity. Grant Cardone, um, the other day I was on a call with him and one of the biggest takeaways that I got from Grant was never waste a crisis. Never waste a crisis. There's always opportunities in the midst of a crisis, right? And then the last thing is gratitude, right? Regardless of everything that we're going through in life today, there's always something to be grateful for, right? I'm alive, I'm here, I'm talking to you, I'm healthy. All of my kids, all of my grandkids, my family, everyone is healthy and alive. I'm grateful for all of that. I'm grateful that I have an opportunity to be safe in my condo and be able to look out the window and it's freezing cold outside, but I'm warm in here. I'm grateful for that, right? So there's so much things to be grateful for. Um, So let me just talk a little bit about what I have experienced through this pandemic. Early on, before the quarantine even started, um, I was in the midst of launching my corporate grief programs, something that I had been working on for the last two years, something that I've been so passionate about. Um, for those of you that know me, in my corporate space, I came from the HR world. Um, and I always tell people that I realized um, after Frank died and how I now became that employee who was grieving and needed the support of my company, just how ill-equipped corporations are to deal with grief in the workplace. And so I've been working on this program for two years and I finally launched it in Guam in January and was getting ready um, to work with several different corporations and then the pandemic happened. Um, I had a couple of big uh, weekend workshops that were already um, confirmed. I had participants that were getting ready to go to this thing. And then this happened, right? So I lost huge amounts of business because of this pandemic. Um, you know, being on stage, doing, um, um, you know, being a guest speaker on, on someone else's stage, I lost a lot of that business. And, um, and so, yeah, I grieved all of that. I was really sad about losing all of that. Um, and I acknowledged my feelings and I worked through it. I used the grief recovery method to help me through all of that so that I can then take my mindset and shift it to something else. So how did I do that? Um, the first thing is, was I needed to adapt. I really needed to adapt what I was doing to be able to still function through this pandemic. Um, one of the things that I'm truly grateful for is that I didn't have all my eggs in one basket. You guys have heard of that saying, right? Don't have all your eggs in one basket. Um, you know, when, when I was um, back in my corporate life and um, Frank and I were, you know, going through all of our different um, spaces, our journey, our careers, you know, he was working for DOC, I was working for the airline industry. Um, but I still had a side gig. Um, those of you that know me, I used to do different things in network marketing and I always seemed to have some sort of side gig because I always believed and I learned this early on from my parents, right? Then they used to own a business when I was younger um, that you shouldn't have all your eggs in one basket. You know, that you always have to have a plan B. And I'm so grateful that I learned that early on in life. I was a marketing student in high school. You know, I forgot all about that work because I ended up going into the airline industry and then becoming, you know, HR ended up being my passion. But marketing or uh, retail or sales, all of that stuff was still in me. I learned that again, like I said, from my parents. And then I took it in school and, you know, little pieces of me always was still in that space.
So I'm really grateful to have had that experience early on in my life and um, understanding what it means to not have all your eggs in one basket. So truly grateful about that. Um, so what I've done to shift uh, the work that I do is doing stuff like this. This is what you call a digital stage, an online stage. Am I getting paid for this? No, I'm not, but I'm serving, right? I wanna be out here, I wanna be able to serve all of you. Um, and so being able to come out here and talk about the impact of COVID-19, various different subjects around it, because it's a huge animal, but we're impacted in many different ways from this thing, right? Um, and so if there's something that you guys want me to talk about, you know, please let me know because I'm going to come on here every week and talk about something different about the impact that this um, pandemic has on all of our lives and hopefully be able to inspire hope and light in you guys and um, give you some tips along the way to help you through whatever that subject is that we're going to talk about. Right. So I change from in person because I know I can't do that. Right. You have to shelter in place. Um, so I had to figure out how do I still um, inspire people? How do I still give grief a voice? Well, now I'm doing it through digital stages. Um, I'm also grateful that I'm an advanced certified grief recovery specialist. so I can do this work online. So if you're one of those people that still need um, help around your losses in your life, not just from the pandemic, but through, you know, losses from before the pandemic even happened. I can help you in that area, right? I can work with you online. Um, and then of course, you know, um, I am a network marketer. I told you that recently, um, that's uh, what I've gotten into again. And so, so grateful that I was able to start up this business with Mick. Um, and that is pretty much our main hustle that we're doing right now. So what can you do, right? What can you do? All of you are in a different space than I am today. And we're all in a different space from each other, right? But there's some common denominators here that a lot of us face, right? Um, you could either be in the space of, I am going to uh, rely on the government and the stimulus check, and I'm just waiting for those to come in. Um, and that's what's gonna help me through this pandemic. Right. That's one way that you could look at it. Um, the other way is um, my job, my employer just furloughed me, so it will come back. My job will come back. Right. So I'm just going to wait for that to happen. Or you're still working. You're a remote worker now. Right. Your, uh, your company allowed you to do work from home. So you're still getting paid. So you're actually not really affected financially. Right. So there may be other parts of your life that are that are impacted besides the finances. Um, but for those of you that are relying on the government stimuluses, um, you know, the um, the bailouts, um, the unemployment checks, um, or if you're waiting for your employer to bring you back, um, these are what I want to encourage you with is first, I'm going to give you the bad news. The bad news is that we don't know when this pandemic is going to end. The government themselves um, will eventually run out of money if this pandemic goes on for way too long, right? They're, they're not limitless. Money doesn't just flow for them. So it's got to come from someplace. Um, your employers, right? I was talking to some people the other day and, um, you know, broke my heart to realize that there are some locations in the world that even after the quarantine is lifted, it's going to take up to a year, maybe even longer for their economy to get back and thrive. And so even if the quarantine is lifted, they're still going to be on furlough for a year minimum, a year minimum, right? So what does that mean for you if you're in that space? Are you going to sit and you're going to wait for that job to come back? And what are you going to do in the meantime? If you've got a family and you need to feed your family, you need to provide for your family, what are you going to do then? Right. So what I want for you to think about is how you can use this time while we are in quarantine to build, to reset, right, to find a deeper purpose in your life, to maybe pick up something that you've been passionate about for so long, um, but you just never had the time to do it because your J-O-B kept you busy, um, kids and everything else in life kept you busy. But now you're here, you're at home. What are you doing with your time, right? Think about where you want to be when this pandemic is over and reflect on how you've used this time, right? So there's um, a couple of things that I wanted to bring up. Um, 
Remember back in 2008, the financial crisis, you guys remember that? Um, there were many different companies that rose from that financial crisis. One that really sticks out for me is Uber. Guys, I didn't even know that Uber existed in 2009. Um, I didn't know about Uber until 2015 when I went to Austin, Texas and I needed a cab and they were like, oh, just download the Uber app. I'm like, what is Uber? Uber had been around for much longer than that and I didn't even know because we didn't have Uber on Guam. But Uber rose from that financial crisis and today they're one of the most successful companies in the world. Uber is global. They're not just national, they're global, right? So companies, people found ways to thrive. Um, Grant Cardone said, don't waste a crisis, right? So these people figured out a way to not waste a crisis, to find opportunities during a time of crisis. Guys, guess what? We're in a crisis. We're in a crisis. So find opportunities, even if that just means that you are going to learn, build your mind, right? Read books, read or listen to audible books. Be inspired by some of the people that I just mentioned, right? Grant Cardone, he's amazing. You know, I remember when I first went to his um, 10X uh, conference in 2019, before I went, I was telling Mick that, I never want to be a famous person. Like I see how much famous people grieve and I don't want to be that person. And then I went to Grant Cardone's 10X conference and the message that I got from him that still resonates with me is you need to get attention. You need to get attention. And in my world of giving grief a voice, the only way for me to give grief a voice and to be able to spread my message is to get attention. And if that means that I have to be out there and become famous in whatever space that is, then I have to do that so that I could inspire hope and light and love into people through my darkness, through my story, through losing Frank. Um, and so that was a huge message that still resonates with me today. It still resonates with me today. Um, and so when, when, when he said, don't waste a crisis. I was like, oh my God, Grant is speaking again. Like I have to listen to what he has to say because he truly did inspire me. And because of that message, I went bigger. I went wider. You know, I didn't stop. I didn't stop. You know, and I'm not going to stop because I know that you guys need this, right? The world is grieving right now. We're grieving so many different things. Um, and so this is just like the most amazing place to be right now. I know it doesn't seem like it, guys. I know it doesn't but you can find your greatness. Uh, Les Brown said that in, um, in, a, in a live Facebook Live that I was on with him today. Like, he's amazing, I have his books. I've never really seen him in person, but he said that we are all made for greatness. But the sad thing about it is that most of us are gonna die before we even realize what that greatness is. You're still breathing, you're still alive, you still have an opportunity to figure out what your greatness is. Eric Worre, if you guys know who Eric Worre is, he is like the most successful network marketer out there. He inspires other big network marketers. And Ed, uh, Eric Worre today in, in the Facebook Live that I was a part of, um, by the way, it's called the Rise Up Challenge in case anybody wants to join. Um, it's free, it's online. Um, but Eric Worre said um, today that, um, you know, if you don't know where to begin, start with what you're passionate about. And if you're passionate about something, then ask yourself two questions. Is it valuable? And can you serve others with it? And if you answered yes to both of those, then get out there and share your passion with others. You don't need a website. You don't need a lot of money to start up. Get on Facebook Live like what I'm doing here and start sharing with people. The example that Eric Worre used today was cupcakes. Like, how to decorate cupcakes. I mean, it was as simple as that, right? Um, I know my sister Lee is watching this and she was posting a lot of different things and we joked to her about it that she's gonna get, a, you know, um, hired by one of the, the schools around the island because she's coming up with these amazing creative ways um, to help her kids and her grandkids through this crisis. And it's probably not her passion, but still she's sharing all of these things on Facebook. You know, my point there, guys, is that 
everyone is on a digital stage right now. If you are not the audience, then you are up on the stage, right? Most people are the audience. You guys are my audience right now. You're listening to what I have to say, but you could be on stage. You could because you also have something to offer the world, right? So I want you guys to use this opportunity now. I want to inspire you to find your greatness, dig deep for what you're passionate about, what you always wanted to do that's creative and that you love. Um, and at the end of all of this, even if you get your job back, even if things go back to whatever your normal is, this could potentially end up being a side hustle for you made a little bit of money during the pandemic. How great is that? Or you could find that this is something that you really love. You're really good at it. People are resonating with it. With it, You are able to serve. You're giving value. Now it becomes something that you're going to do even after the pandemic, right? So think about all those things. We all have choices. We all have the ability to control our finances, guys. We do. I want to tell you and inspire you to not be held hostage by someone else making sure that your finances are coming in. You could do it for yourself. Um, uh, Ed, Eric Worry today talked about, and of course he is a top network marketer, so of course he's going to say that network marketing is the place to start if you don't know where to begin. Um, and one of the things that I love about network marketing is um, that you will be surrounded by community. You will be surrounded by a ton of amazing leaders um, and you'll get to be able to share the opportunity with others. And that's serving. That's serving, right? Um, I come from a corporate space. I miss the team. I miss the culture. I miss the leadership. I miss the accountability. I get all that with network marketing, but on a whole different level, and I love it, and I love it. I didn't realize how much I loved it until we started doing it, and it actually became our main hustle because a lot of my grief business went away, um, but it's keeping me grounded. It's helping me to develop myself even more um, as a person, as a speaker, as a coach, um, and just someone to inspire all of you. Um, and so if you're not sure about what to do, reach out, ask for help, right? Don't be afraid to ask for help. You could direct message me. We could talk about, you know, different ways other than what I talked about here, um, where I can give you a little bit more specifics about what I'm doing, um, you know, or just reflect, write stuff down, journal. And, you know, you just never know that light bulb might go off and you may figure it out. You can start a business from scratch. The gig economy has been around. Um, it's been around since the 90s, but it really rose from the ashes uh, back during the financial crisis in 2008 and 2009, right? That's how Uber came about. It was a gig economy. It was just one of those things. I got a gig. It's one of, you know, it's a one-off, right? It gave more flexibility to people. In our world today, we're not going to go back to the same thing. If you guys remember 9-11, the security checkpoints at airports completely changed. And that was as a result of 9-11. So guess what? Our world from COVID-19 is definitely going to change even when the quarantine is lifted. So are you ready for it? Are you ready to adapt to that change? Get yourselves ready now, guys. Put yourselves in a position where you have a plan B, where all of your eggs are not in one basket, and that way you could thrive now and when the pandemic is over. So I want to wish you guys so much love and light. Let me know, direct message me. If you've got my phone number, WhatsApp me. Let me know what you would love for me to talk about next week, or I'll just come up with a subject based on what people are talking about um, to me through the week. Um, but I love you guys. I'll see you next week. Please keep safe. Stay indoors. The quarantine has not been lifted yet. I'll talk to you guys again soon. Take care. Bye.